and welcome to the ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum. So we're back today with Claire Lopez, formerly of the CIA and now the Center for Security Policy, where she is the Vice President of Research. Claire, thanks for coming back. Thank you, Barry. Thanks for having me. We're going to talk today about the Pakistani doctor who became an American hero for advising American intelligence where to find bin Laden in Pakistan when he was hiding in plain sight, I guess you would call it, in Islamabad. Tell me the story of how he discovered bin Laden, who he told about it, and what happened to him as a result, please. So uh, this Pakistani medical doctor, whose name is Shaquil Afridi, uh, was recruited by the CIA uh, when, for some reason, they were hunting uh, bin Laden um, in all the wrong places. And they uh, recruited him because uh, he was able to mount a vaccination program um, in areas where they were searching uh, that could provide cover for the searching. Well, he, um, Dr. Afridi, uh, and his uh, working colleagues um, found the house in Abbottabad where Osama bin Laden and family had moved uh, from Iran sometime during 2010. And, of course, as we all know, uh, he was finally uh, dispatched to his 72 virgins in May of 2011 by American Special Operations Forces. But this was the hunt for him, and Dr. Afridi, under cover of using this vaccination program, um, had some freedom of movement uh, to be able to move in these various areas and apparently uh, located that house in Abbottabad, Pakistan, uh, which, by the way, was down the street from the Pakistani uh, Military Academy, akin to uh, something like our uh, West Point. So he's hiding in plain sight. Obviously, the Pakistanis knew where he was. Sure, um, sure. They, they kept it a secret. And we found him through basically a American supporter, this doctor, uh, in Pakistan, what happened to him after the word came out as to how we, American intelligence and then the military, located bin Laden? What happened to the doctor? Well, I mean, first of all, to give him you know, credit, what a courageous man he was to undertake a mission like this. He had to know how dangerous that was. Um, but he did it anyway, and he succeeded at it. Well, um, once the word was leaked um, that he and his uh, vaccination program were involved um, in the, the location, the, the finding of, of, of Osama bin Laden in Abbottabad, uh, he was arrested by the Pakistani government. Um, he has been held in prison, tortured uh, to this day, uh, even though um, the United States uh, from time to time has made uh, requests and, and uh, overtures to try to get him released, uh, he remains uh, in prison in Pakistan. So tell me, 9-11 was the worst terror attack in American history. We found the guy that did it. The SEAL team took him out. We would not have found him but for the efforts of this very brave doctor. Why in the world has America, both under the Obama administration and the Trump administration, left him in prison when we have tremendous leverage over Pakistan in the form of massive amounts of U.S. aid? Well, we have to look at this on the flip side. There are currently something like 14,000 American troops still in Afghanistan, something around 37,000 contractors, others uh, from NGOs. Their supplies, everything they need to survive, mostly, I should say, comes by truck overland through Pakistan. The supplies and, and et cetera are shipped uh, to the port of Karachi offloaded 
onto truck convoys that then travel up uh, the the entire, I don't know what you call it, the length, the width uh, of Pakistan up to Afghanistan where they're delivered to to our, our people, right? That means our people in, Pakistan, uh, in Afghanistan are in many ways literally hostages to the jihadist regime in Islamabad. So this works both ways, and those convoys of trucks that, that ply the roadways up from Karachi north to Afghanistan have been attacked by proxy Islamic terror groups on more than one occasion. Let's remember, the Pakistani intelligence service, the ISI, is the, what would you call, the godfather of the Taliban. They created the Taliban. They're also um, the the, uh, the the sponsor, the back of the supporter, arm armor trainer of other Deobandi uh, Islamic terror groups, Lashkar-e Janvi, Lashkar-e Taiba, and others. This is a jihad regime in Islamabad. Um, yes, uh, they provided a certain amount of support. Uh, certainly during the 1980s, when, when we all were fighting to get uh, the Red Army out of Afghanistan, yes. But in the end, we are infidel invaders in Muslim lands. And that's how they look at us. And they look at Dr. Afridi as a traitor. That's what they call him. They I call believe. him a traitor. And I'm still nevertheless shocked that America is dumping billions into Pakistan. And what we get out of that is a corridor for our truck convoys to get into Afghanistan through Karachi. And at the same time, there's a terrorist regime in place actively supporting terror around the world and openly persecuting the guy that helped us catch the worst terrorist in American history, and we don't do anything about it because it's my belief that if the President of the United States, whether it was Obama or Trump, wanted the doctor out, he would be out if it was that important to us. Well, I, two things I'll, I'll, I'll note, first of all. We, we're using here uh, among us, uh, Barry, the word terrorism, terrorist terrorism, okay? Within Islam, the word terror means the taking of a Muslim life without right. And it is based on certain Quranic verses 532 and 533. That's not what we mean when we say terror, terrorism, right? What they call jihad, which is warfare against non-Muslims, is what we tend to call terrorism. We have to understand that we're using different words here with different understandings of the meanings. Now, the second thing I would say is that I think certainly President Trump um, has made uh, efforts to get Dr. Afridi released. For example, um, the Pakistani Prime Minister um, Imran Khan visited the United States just a couple months ago. That would be July uh, 2019. And I know that during talks between the president and uh, Prime Minister uh, Khan that this topic was raised. Um, I think that there is uh, some discussion going on of a prisoner swap. Uh, the United States holds in custody uh, Afia Siddiqui. Afia Siddiqui, people might remember, uh, jihadist Pakistani a uh, woman who, uh, in the uh, uh, the attempt to take her into custody by U.S. troops, she seized a weapon and uh, tried to kill them unsuccessfully, thankfully. Uh, she remains in U.S. custody. I know that but President Trump did raise this possibility, perhaps of a prisoner swap. That's somebody the Pakistanis want back very badly, this Afia Siddiqui. Um, so I don't think that efforts are, are, are non-existent. Uh, they haven't, you know, resulted yet in the release of Dr. Afridi. Uh, but, but we know that President Trump is, is trying. That's on his agenda. Well, with a little bit of luck, God willing, we get 
this hero out of Pakistan and uh, we can declare at least that we finally stood up for a man that is an American hero and should be rewarded uh, with the full involvement of everyone in the U.S. government. Claire, we're going to leave it here. Thanks for joining us today. Remember, text 88202, the word truth, and you'll be on our mailing list, or find Barry.com, which will take you to our website where you can sign up. Always free, always in your mailbox every day. Uh, I encourage you to participate. Thanks again for joining us. The ATP Report, I'm Barry Nussbaum. 